Okay, we have John Livesey here, the Successful Pitch Podcast. John, how are you rocking the podcast these days? Well, Jessica, I just am so excited because the way I rocked it was I was on Entrepreneur on Fire thanks to your introduction and support, and I, that was a goal of mine for a long, long time. And JLD, the host, is so great and so spontaneous, and to get him to actually laugh was an unexpected treat because I thought to myself, if we're having a good time, then the listeners will have a good time. That was a great interview. I listened to it the day it came out. I'm sure a ton of people did. Thank you. It's uh, He was so gracious. He put the link to my new book, The Successful Pitch, on there. He put the link to my book trailer. And, of course, he mentioned my own podcast. So it was a huge win to have been on that show and get all that promotion and get the response. He he tweets the whole day that your episode airs, and it was just fantastic. Well, that's a really good point about the the tweeting. Um, can you tell me because you have like you're a totally rock the podcast star, John? Because uh-huh. we've been booking you for I think eight months, and you have an amazing podcast that you interview people on. I talked to Jason Swank a couple days ago, and he said, you know, twenty percent of the work is the interview, eighty percent is the promotion, and you do a really interesting thing where you add a blog post to your website with you as a guest on other shows. So talk a little bit about how you're promoting your interviews. I get interviewed. I have my website guy take the artwork from the host who interviewed me and put that up on a blog post. And so it's the host picture and in the name of his or her podcast that people see on my blog post. And then they say, I'm a guest. Then I tweet about it. Then I send an email out once a week of every show I've been on, I'm saying, if you want to learn the difference between an investor pitch versus a pitch for funding, click here to hear uh, me on uh, this person's podcast and the answers I give. Or if you want to hear my worst entrepreneur moment, click here to hear me on Entrepreneur on Fire. So it continues on and on and on. And I keep getting a lot of um, response from that. And of course, then if the host is kind enough to post tweets about me being a guest, I of course retweet that. Right, right. And you've been, when did you start your podcast? How long ago? It was a year and a half ago, April uh, from the previous year. So, and um, when did you start seeing the impact on your business? Because a lot of people <laughs> ask that, like, well, yes. when will I see results or I'll test it out for a month and see what happens, you know? Yes. I, I think to myself, that kind of uh, I want instant results mindset is almost like dating, right? Imagine that you're going to go on and date somebody and say, you know what? If we don't get married in a, a, a month, I'm out of here, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, what I have to say for me, I was fortunate enough that the second guest I had, Jessica, Judy Robinette, started referring me clients right away. And she was so happy that the people I was helping with their pitch were getting such great results that in September, so she was my second guest in April of last year, by September she said, let's start Crack the Funding Code together. So had it not been for me taking the leap of faith to start my own podcast, uh, I would never have met Judy, we would never have had our business, I would never then have turned, you know, 10 of my favorite episodes into a book. So it's it's all goes wow, from... Wow, really changed your whole business or your your life. <laughs> it did. Oh. Well, you know, uh, the investor, you know, people would come to me and say, you know, I definitely need help with a pitch to grab people's attention because I'm a tech person and I only know how to talk about how something works. And I keep saying that people, you need to grab the heartstrings so that investors open the purse strings. And that's the benefit of being a storyteller. No matter what you're pitching, whether it's to get a job, get customers, get people to join your team, get funded, whatever it is, you need to become a master storyteller. And that's my passion. But then people started telling me, Jessica, you know, I need introductions to investors. And I thought, I don't know how to do that. And then I just realized I need to figure it out. And so that was the whole intent of my podcast. I didn't have this big dream of getting to X millions of downloads so I could sell ads on it. In fact, I have an ad on my podcast for Crack the Funding Code, my business. I run my own ad with a different voiceover for my own business because it's so targeted. And the network of investors that I have who share with me their criteria totally took off my business because they say to me, look, we're looking for good deals. If you have somebody who has a good pitch and you would invest in them, we'll we'll take an introduction. 
So the investors are happy. The people who come to me saying I need a pitch and an intro introduction are happy. And I can literally on the phone show people my podcast guests and say, well, here's four people I would introduce you to once you're pitch ready. So it really helps my business. Wow. That's so awesome. And people are now watching this and they're in love with you. They want to interview you. They want to listen to your podcast. What is your expertise? You know, what do you talk about on podcasts and what kinds of guests do you have on your podcast? Sure. What I talk about as a guest, as you so kindly mentioned, is, you know, Inc. Magazine called me the pitch whisperer. And what that means is, much like a horse whisperer, which calms nervous horses down, everybody gets nervous when you get in front of a room to pitch for anything. And I help people get really confident. So if you want to have me on as a guest and learn some really key secrets about how to be more confident in any situation, then that's definitely a topic I can talk about. If you want to talk about how to craft a story so that people are engaged with you and remember you, I'm your expert guest on that. And of course, then if you want to talk about how to pitch and what investors are looking for, I'm great on that. And finally, if you're looking for the secrets to selling, because I won salesperson of the year when I was at Condé Nast, I know how to do that. So those are my real key areas. And the kinds of guests that I have on my podcast typically are people who are investors, whether they're an angel investor, a venture capitalist, but also I interview really successful entrepreneurs who've gotten funded, who tell me their journey. And then I have really great authors on there, like Judy Robinette, who's both an investor and an author. That's my ideal uh, guest. That's so great. And yeah, you helped me with uh, one of my sales emails and you just said, hey, I'm just gonna, you know, I think you were like, well, you can ignore this if you want. And I was like, no, this is awesome. Like you helped me with just, you know, a couple of the lines. You actually showed me how to tweak them to make it more effective and more successful. So thank you for your help. My pleasure. Yeah, Please. it's just amazing like how little changes can make a big difference in the sales process. So, John, um, how can people find you online? Is it the successfulpitch.com? Yes, or just johnlivesay.com. It takes you all there. Um, and you can, the successful pitch takes you to, you know, my podcast on iTunes, but on my website, johnlivesay.com. On Twitter, I'm John underscore Livesay. Um, I post all my podcasts on my LinkedIn profile. It's on YouTube. There's, but basically, just go to my website, johnlivesay.com. Thank you. And friends, if you want to get booked as a guest expert, come check us out at interviewconnections.com, and we'll get you on all great shows, just like we've gotten John on a ton of great shows. Thanks, everyone.